Good morning. I want to thank everybody who joins us here in Ukraine Media Center of Current Forum. My name is Olha Tamanova. And on behalf of all of our team, I want to say that today we are very happy that yet another very important initiative will be discussed in our platform. We have invited you today to talk about the employment of persons with disabilities, to talk about European perspectives here in Ukraine. And I will pass the microphone to my co-moderator. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to see all of you here today in, at our round table. And I hope my apologies, but I'm not hearing you. Well, let's check. We don't hear you either. Can you hear us now? just a couple of seconds of technical arrangements until our colleagues joining us online can hear us because our conversation today will be in a mixed mode joining us will be both guests online and offline are you hearing us now for what i understand they don't because they keep silent but there is communication established with them because we can hear them, so I want to thank everybody who joins us today and everybody who paid attention to such an important subject. My name is Ulyana Pcholkina. I'm a member of the Board of NGO Group for Active Rehabilitation, which is one of the co-founders of the League of the Strong NGO. So today I would like, right now, I would like to pass the microphone to our speakers who join us here today and I hope our communication will be fixed shortly and first of all we will start our meeting with a short video are we ready to launch the video good morning my name is Susanna Mnatsakanyan I'm the manager project manager of the council of europe and today i'm happy to greet all the participants of the conference which is dedicated to the very important topic when we talk about employment of people with disabilities we talk about human rights and the council of europe is the organization which deals with the protection of human rights across the continent when we talk about social and economic rights we talk about the main standards of the council of europe european charter what it says about the employment of people with disabilities it says that in any member state have to provide efficient access for people with disabilities to open job market unfortunately this is what european committee for social rights is not me in the summaries as of 2022 ukraine has not done yet what else has not was not done by Ukraine. There is no access to employment for people with mental disabilities. There is no policy in place for employment in the open job market. And Ukraine also does not comply with the uh, reasonable 
accessibility. Those are the realities of our life, and they have to change, and they can change, and this is why we all gathered here today to talk about the new models for employment of people with disabilities, which should be implemented in Ukraine in both legislative and practical level, and I'm sure we will make it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue. I hope our communication is fixed with our colleagues who join us online. And the first speaker is Oksana Zhilnovic, the Minister of the Social Policy of Ukraine. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to get engaged in this very important event today. Just like Ms. Susanna mentioned, really, Ukraine, in its aspiration to join the European Council should synchronize a number of legislative acts with, in compliance with the European legislation to erase the standards for all the groups of the population so that everybody feels comfortable and confident and independent in our country, economically active and with, with dignity. And one of such groups which supports additional supports is the people with disabilities. We understand that today the full-scale invasion and that scale of destruction that we witness on an everyday basis bring a lot of injuries and trauma to all of our population, both civil and mil military. And after the Ukrainian victory, it will be Ukraine with the people with the different degrees of disability, and that's the reality we should learn to live with. We should accept this reality. And third, we should understand that our society has to create new rules for interaction with the people with disabilities, not in the paternalistic format, not in a format of pity and small disbursements, but creation of the normal conditions for self-realization. We have to understand that every member of our society, when we start the process of recovery, is a valuable resource that should be engaged to the maximum extent for the better future of our country. And we have to access every person with such understanding to provide them with a full complex of instruments for timely and full-scale rehabilitation and the capabilities for retraining and acquisition of new skills that cannot, while the old ones cannot be used due to limited abil ability and the set of instruments of support which will allow people to self-realize and to acquire a normal job and feel themselves a normal part of the society and to make use for the gov for the state. Those are the tasks that we set for ourselves as a ministry, as the government, in cooperation with the parliament. We understand that those instruments that are available today are not very efficient because even as of the pre-war conditions when Ukraine had 2.7 people with disabilities, officially according to the data from the pension fund, about 700 people were working who were showing their disability and the joint social contribution was paid for them on a lower scale. So those people mostly work illegally, they don't have relevant guarantees for employment and job protection, or otherwise they live at homes for their small disbursements, for their small pensions, and cannot realize themselves in full. We have to change the rules, we have to change the approach, because the ministry is created to set the rules of cooperation. So today, if the results are not so efficient, if we understand that people with mental disabilities are not employed anywhere, they are not integrated either into inclusiveness, not in the employment, nor in the study, we have to change the approaches to all types of employment of people with disabilities. So our plans are to increase the resource that we can operate to increase the number, increase the scale of support for people with disability, disabilities. And in this format, we would like to change the policies, the, the policies, the quotes, and the punishment, and to create the opportunities for the employers to choose whether they support the people with disabilities 
by a contribution which uh, that does not entail any negative connotation on the employer or otherwise that the employer could be ready to fulfill the quote in terms of number of people they are ready to employ or s switch to a format of social enterprise and create the number of people with disabilities employed and receive some targeted support for employment of people with disabilities is the priority block which in our opinion will help solve the problem which we are facing today. Another thing important for us is to increase the number of instruments of such support. What I'm talking about is that today the formal approach of employment of people with disabilities results in effect when the employers submit some vacancies to the employment service and they re reply that they don't have relevant personnel to fill those vacancies and this is how the employment is over. It's just a formal process which doesn't help anybody. So we would like that in this process of search of jobs and employment of people with disabilities and their support and support of businesses who would like to employ such people, we would use all possible all possible instruments including private employment companies which could be competitive which could compete for the people with disabilities to employ them and to receive relevant remuneration for employing them at a high income job another another important thing is a social accompaniment because on the way to the job people who lose uh, some disability whose ability to work they need to believe themselves again they need to understand what will be their route from their hope to job in case they have problems with their vision or if we talk about the problems with hearing then it will be the uh, gesture language signs and support if they have any incapacitation in terms of movement and the same support is required by the employer because they don't know how to cooperate. They have a number of biases that should be debunked. If we support this service of accompaniment, just the small conversations with the collective, how to cooperate with the people with disabilities, what problems may arise in which are related to their partial incapacitation, how to communicate properly to them. It relieves the stress, it relieves the distrust, is it improves the quality of cooperation in the collective, increasing the chances of the people with disabilities to integrate better into the working collective. We will procure this service through a fund for social fund for people with disabilities because we believe it will become another important instrument for support and improvement of employment of people with disabilities. Another aspect worth paying attention to is targeted support. Yes, we have we have tax reliefs, tax exemptions, but they are not targeted for any people, specific people, subsidized jobs, return of the part of salary if the employer understands that people cannot get themselves involved in the work in progress in full. So this type of support is extremely important in our opinion and it will be supporting and it will help to for the job resource to become more interesting for the potential employers and yet another thing is the increase of the range of the social enterprises we have quite good IT companies good initiatives service companies who show very good examples of engagement of people with disabilities with including mental disabilities and it demonstrates some results people are employed and there is a social effect but we don't promote this social business we don't have the culture of support of this social business today they exist in model when such business only those business which are founded by the NGOs uh, they are not relevant anymore. It more resembles a scheme rather than a normal business. No businessman creates an NGO and then create a company. People start working, they develop, they stand on their two, and they start understanding <coughs> that they are ready to invest a part of the social component into something important. Only after some period when they cover the necessities of their businesses. So we have 
to support those businesses in a targeted manner when they want to become social. That's our social, oh, that's our legislative initiatives that we would like to support and implement. That's me in, in brief. I understand there, is, there are more speakers. Everybody will have their word. These are our priorities and I would like the society to be engaged in these initiatives because I'm confident they will help us to switch to a new level of employment for people with disabilities and their inclusion into social life. Thank you indeed. Of course, we will be having an opportunity to work on that. I would like to give the floor to Mr. Zichenko, who heads the organization for the help of the persons with the uh, disabilities. This is extremely hot button topic, which is in itself is complex and it is difficult in terms of how it is perceived by the society and the ability of the society to respond and to get engaged in this. Back to the statistics. And of course, we in the first part of this meeting, we talk about statistics. Before the fully fledged war, according to the statistics, we had 2.7 million pe persons with disabilities. What the minister has suggested, about 700,000 of those were people who were officially employed. And we, at the government, at the state, saw officially employed and part of the social protection system. This begs the question, what is about the rest of the people? Of course, disabilities are different. We talk about the physical state of people who are demanded to inquire and require new skills and to get engaged and employed. There is a simpler way to go. If we analyze how the distribution of the people goes with the disabilities goes, we talk about the groups of disabilities. More than 60% of these people are people of the so-called third group, people who absolutely are fit to work in the open labor market. It's about the conditions. The second point is the current mechanism and the model of cooperation and interaction. We are talking about the triangle, the employer or the future employee and the state. The current status quo, and this is where I would like to go back to what Susanna has suggested. She started off by saying that we want to see the implementation of the efficient system for a person to be able to realize himself or herself. The system is there, but the question arises how efficient that system is. Again, if we go back to the statistics that I have verbalized, the answer will be in the negative. If we talk about the models that are being used today, it goes like this. Employer, in some specific examples do their best and implement a couple of programs. Indeed, in Ukraine, there are socially responsible businesses, people who are interacting with the government and provide conditions for the persons with disabilities. On the other hand, the practical implementation of the project makes us tell that there are thousands of enterprises and businesses in Ukraine that are not able or willing to they are setting hindrances for other people to implement these projects. The social responsibility of business provides for the fact that those who are not actively engaged in this program should be paying for others' people to do this. This is the change of paradigm in general. When we talk about the practical realization at the foundation, we are now implementing a number of steps, including the economic sanctions. For example, we know that there are a lot of businesses who are doing their best to avoid such responsibility. And we realize that they are fully aware that in today's Ukraine, the basic things about the social contributions are being violated. And they are the people who are violating this in terms of the legislation, in terms of providing employment for the persons with the disabilities. The reasons are there, and we know the causes. But we are talking about the law that is being breached. And those who breach the law should be held accountable. To be frank with you, currently what we see is that 
people with disabilities are sometimes discouraged to be employed. And uh, the society enjoy the so-called paternalistic scheme when people with disabilities are viewed as people who has been who be, be, become dysfunctional. This is not exactly so. In the majority of cases, these things are not interrelated. We should explain it to the society, explain it to the businesses and explain it to the persons with the disabilities themselves. We are talking about the change of paradigm, the change in the mindset. When we focus on the further steps to be taken in order to change the status quo, this will include the following one. We should, and I agree here, talk about the basis and resources that we can take advantage of. Secondly, the inclusive nature of the society in terms of the services that both the employer and the employee need for the latter spot right to be employed is guaranteed. And third point is the system of interaction between the employer and the government. This triangle implies that we should concentrate on how to di these interests to get diverged on one point to come up with the unified system to provide employment for the persons with the disabilities. And I am standing ready to join in the discussion. Thank you. Now, we will go online, and the floor is given to Yulia Rasinchuk, the president of the Charitable Foundation Association of the Inclusive Country. The floor is yours, Yulia. Welcome. Can you hear me? We do. Can you hear us? It looks as if what we are hearing is the voice of the interpreter, not from the floor. Welcome, dear colleagues. In the first place, I would like to share my expertise. More than a decade, this organization has been in place, and we are helping people with uh, very high degree of persons who've been disabled, and uh, it has been a cornerstone of our activities, of my organization. I myself am a person that with a disability, and I'm using the wheelchair, and as a social activist, and my expertise of a person with a disability has shown me that over these years I have realized the problem that people are facing with different types, including heavy types of disabilities. I will not enlist all those challenges, but people are aware of these problems. The main challenges include the prejudice against the people with heavy forms of disabilities while getting a chance to get employed. Secondly, the social transportation system that is not providing enough accessibility. And third point, this is what I would like to stress in a special way, the ability to compete on the labor market for these people. This is a major hindrance towards being employed. The latter point tells me that people with heavy forms of disabilities are mainly disadvantaged. They can only be employed under the conclusion that they can prove their form of disability. There are a lot of employers who will offer jobs for the people with disabilities, but what we hear more often than not that the employer will say, we are only interested in employing people who can see, who can hear, and people who don't need an active support from the outside. The employer does not seem to be violating the law. They are targeted with special quotas that they have to fulfill. And it means that people with the persons with the disabilities are not taken aboard. Persons with a disabilities, of course, enjoy some advantages. They are not discriminated against. 
unlike the general society. People without disabilities are able to take advantage of the public transportation. They have open access to any place where they work. They don't need special mechanisms of accessibility. And of course, the percentage of the persons with disabilities that we are now registering in Ukraine seems to be irrelevant today. And they are, the figures are irrelevant because people with some light forms of disabilities don't get registered as such. Under such conditions, we are in no place to say that we know how many disabled persons there are. People have been spending their years in trying to impl get employed with a relative success. For example, I always cite a situation. If you imagine two persons with disabilities, they apply for the job, and one person is the third group of disability, people who are not actually restricted in any physical form, and that there is a first form of disability, people who are in their wheelchairs. They seem to be enjoying equal competencies to be employed for a vacant job. It's easy to imagine who will be selected by the employer. Of course, this will be the person that the employer believes will bring less troubles. The heavy forms of disability. What do we mean when we say people with heavy forms of disability? These are people who are suffering from a permanent troubles that have to do with their rage and they cannot cooperate with the social environment. These are people that must be protected. I am currently in Germany and of course I got interested to, in their expertise in terms of the German legislation, how people with disabilities are employed. The system here in many ways resembles the Ukrainian legislation. Yet there is a single social contribution that must be paid. There are businesses that are implied to have two or more persons with disabilities. But as for the heavy forms of disableness, the local legislation does not specify. Here in Germany, they, in the first place, talk about people with heavy forms of disabilities, which is good. The people must be protected by the state, and I mean those people with the heavy forms of disabilities. I am sure about that. And the government must set special quotas for such people to be employed. While we are trying to protect such people legislatively, we are also creating some barriers for the people with the heavy forms of disabilities who have to compete with the disabled persons in lighter forms. And of course, this accessibility is the major cornerstone of our activity. I Thank you, Ms. Yulia. I cannot help but reflect and just like um, a person who uses a wheelchair too, I have to mention the problem with parking spaces in our country. I would like to pass the microphone to our another speaker, Andriy Timoshenko, director of KPMG in Ukraine. Thank you very much for the invitation. Good morning, everybody. Am I being heard? Yeah, yeah the most important thing is for the gesture language interpreter to hear us. Show us if you're hearing us. Should I speak up? Yeah, this is way better. That's the foreign language interpreter who creates a lot of obstacles because nobody hears uh, Ukrainian. You can just switch channels over there without interpretation on your end. Well, uh, simultaneous interpretation is important for us, so we are heard by everybody. We apologize for this technical issue. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. We were happy to 
get engaged in this event because for K KPMG, for a global company on a global level, social inclusiveness is one of the top priorities within our corporate responsibility. We were very happy to get involved in the work which is underway as to improvement of stimulation of employment of people with disabilities. So we made the analysis of international practice focusing on European countries mostly, but we looked at other countries too, like Australia, for example. We got our partners involved in this analysis. There is the Competence Center in Australia, which deals with those matters. Also, we have a partner, European Confederation of Inclusive Businesses, that includes more than 8,000 inclusive businesses all across European Union countries. So what we've seen is, first of all, that there is no such unique recipe that would solve all the issues, because every country solves this problem of improvement of employment of people with disabilities in a different way. But there are certain features that I could say are mostly progressive or most successful and they depend a lot on so to say social and economic level of development of the country maybe historic context and on how how generally a country is individualistic or more social but there are certain features that can be emphasized and they are something that I would like to tell about today is the transition from the punishment approach to a stimulating approach. What I mean, what I mean is that even though there are, there are penalties for not fulfilling the quotes in certain countries, the quotes exist everywhere, they vary from 5 to 6 percent, from 4 to 6 percent, well, within that range. But instead of punishment, instead of penalties, there are stimulating contributions, the contributions to the system of social support, which then create the tools which can be used by the businesses and companies to improve the employment. The funds are being allocated for equipment of the workplaces. Then there are funds allocated that compensate the loss of productivity. Another interesting tool is the priority participation of the companies who fill the quotes in full or companies which are inclusive businesses. They have priority in government procurement. So the government tries not to impose some approaches, but they allow using instruments by the companies that they may use to increase their sales, for example, or to fulfill some percentage and not to try to uh, compete for some market share. For example, in France, the quote can be filled a half. A, a half, for example, the, by persons with disabilities and another half can be filled by government procurement so they can fill the quote by buying buying the goods or services from I inclusive businesses another moment is more of an approach which is focused on individual not like a carpet bombardment but consideration of a specific case, specific person, the, situa the situation with the loss of productivity. And again, even here, the approaches vary. For example, the countries where the system of social support is more developed, where they have more funds, like Australia, for example, they look at a very specific individual and within a couple of months, with relation to that specific workplace, they make an analysis of loss of productivity and they come up with a percentage. There are countries which have more of a simplified approach. It doesn't necessarily decrease the level of social support, but they segregate 50, 70, 90 percent loss of productivity, just like within those ranges. And they 
refer people to every specific category and as it was said here it's important to look at specific cases here because people with disability does not equal lo people with loss of productivity or sufficient loss of productivity which is important too now regarding the inclusive businesses what is considered a, an inclusive business the percentage of people to, to be employed so that the business is considered to be inclusive business it's 50 70 60 percent the number the figure varies by country but in such countries as poland for example the understanding well there is uh, the notion of social cooperative and the understanding of who could be working under this framework is not only people with disabilities but also other vulnerable categories of population the people who were unemployed for a long period of time for example or other categories of people so it's a more broad notion what we've seen as well is that people many countries they withdraw from the understanding of social enterprise they are more individualistic they think that it's better to employ to provide for social inclusion to employ the dis disabled people with regular enterprises they stimulate less in spain i think they have 2100 inclusive businesses it's uh, maybe about the structure of economy they are engaged a lot in uh, touristic services services sector so they are quite successful in the employment of people with disabilities what the inclusive businesses get is the priority access to government procurement to participation in economy of a government sector it's support in compensation for loss of productivity and use of the workplaces and to lesser extent those uh, tax exemptions or some subsidies so those instruments are engaged to a lesser extent and it's a general approach because it's easy to manipulate in this way and maybe it, those are not the best instruments well yeah and finally what i would like to add is that us as a company who works a lot with businesses we see the interest from european companies in, including inclusive companies to help to support in view of the difficult situation which will be here after the war but e even before the war we had 2.7 people with disabilities so the situation required changes for a lot those changes were long due so european companies they uh, are ready to offer support to get engaged but we have to have transparent legislation for a long term period how it would be changed and what we see in our ukrainian clients we see the interest to have the social function to improve the situation with employment of people with disabilities and we hope that the situation will change to the better thank you thank you very much our next speaker is Haydn Hammersley from European Disability Forum Haydn do we have sound on the speaker will be this the speaker will be speaking English so who we're seeing is the interpreter so you have opportunity to switch between the channels and you can hear either in English or in Ukrainian you're having the speaker behind you Haydn welcome very much uh, good morning everybody and hello from Brussels um, if it's okay I will uh, just share my screen no I don't seem to be able to do that okay I will carry on anyway. So what I wanted to talk to you about today was just to explain a few tendencies that we see in the countries of the European Union, for you to understand a little bit how this compares with uh, what you're experiencing regarding employment of persons with disabilities in Ukraine. So 
The first thing to uh, explain is the employment rate we see of active persons with disabilities in the 27 member states of the European Union. The employment rate we currently see for people who are of active working age and who have a disability is uh, 51%. So my understanding is that this average is um, a little bit higher than what we currently see in Ukraine. But the um, statistics depend very much on which country we're talking about. So, for example, the countries where we see the um, highest employment rates are, for example, um, in the Nordic countries, in Sweden, Denmark, uh, Finland, um, also in uh, Portugal and in the Netherlands and France. So in general, in Northern Europe and Western Europe, we see slightly higher uh, employment rates of persons with disabilities, but uh, still far below the employment rates for persons without disabilities. So we're still not at a point where we can talk of countries in the European Union that have a good model or are really succeeding at uh, promoting employment of persons with disabilities. I wanted to talk also about some of the different policies we see in most of the countries of the European Union, because I understand you're having discussions about the policies currently existing in Ukraine to promote employment of persons with disabilities. And I heard that you were discussing about quota systems. So indeed, quota systems um, exist in the majority of the countries in the European Union. It's quite a common policy, but we see it being implemented in different ways. So some countries have quite a high uh, quota threshold, such as in France. Um, a lot of countries have uh, quota systems only for the public sector and not for the private sector. So it's more common for the uh, quotas to be just in the public sector. And some countries, interestingly, have no quota systems at all, including some of the countries where we see the best um, uh, the best uh, uh, employment rate. So uh, in the Nordic countries, in Sweden, Denmark, uh, Finland, there are no quota systems, and also in the Netherlands. So they opt for a different system. Um, also, what we see in the quota systems is that some countries have uh, a fine that you can pay for non-compliance. Uh, this tends to be quite common, but in some countries, the fines are not really enough to uh, encourage employers to take on persons with disabilities and to meet their quota. And also some countries, it's not clear where these the money from these fines go. So this is the case, for example, in Romania, where you have to pay a fine, but it's not very clear where the money is used. In other countries, such as in the Czech Republic, the money gets put into a common fund, and then this is used um, as a fund that can subsidize wages for the uh, employers who do employ above their quota of persons with disabilities. Other common policies we see in the uh, countries of the European Union are offering wage subsidies or financial incentives for employers in the open labour market. So this is the case for almost all of the member states apart from uh, Germany, uh, Portugal and Estonia. Uh, we also see many member states offering tax reductions to employers who employ uh, persons with disabilities. So this is the case in more or less half of the member states. And I can share with you afterwards, if you like, a presentation with the maps that show which countries do and do not have this. And then what's very common in the European Union is that the state uh, subsidizes the costs for a reasonable accommodation in the workplace. So for adjustments that need to that inquire um, costs in the workplace to make them accessible or to buy assistive technologies. 
So this is the case for almost all of the member states of the European Union, except for uh, Latvia and Greece, where the system exists but isn't implemented 100% of the time. And in Cyprus, it's not the case. They have a different system for supporting employment. And then maybe because I, I have been asked just to speak for a very short um, amount of time today, maybe just one final thing that um, we consider in the European Disability Forum uh, very important is the, uh, the countries where a person who's working is allowed to keep the disability allowance that they receive as a person with disability. So there are some countries in Europe where you can be working, receiving your salary and receiving your disability allowance at the same time, which very much encourages um, employment. It encourages people to enter the labor market. We have a number of countries, the majority of which in Europe, that uh, see a strong reduction in your disability allowance when you begin to work. And some countries where you simply lose all of your disability allowance when you begin working. So the countries where you can maintain your disability allowance are Bulgaria, Cyprus, Czechia, Germany, Finland, France, Croatia, Hungary, Greece, Spain, Italy, Lithuania, Latvia, Malta, Romania, and Slovakia. Sorry, the list was quite long. But these are countries in general where we see slightly higher, with the exception of Greece, where we see slightly higher um, disability employment rates. And in Greece, we don't see such high rates simply because the employment situation remains quite difficult in, in that country. But in general, this is a policy that we really encourage and it takes away the risk that many people face when entering the labor market. And for now, I think I will stop there and um, hand back to the, the moderator and the other speakers. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we appreciate you for sharing this information with us. In general, we don't have enough time to give the floor to our panelists to ask questions. But I have a question. As a social activist and a person with disability, I have had my experience, both successful and unsuccessful, in terms of getting education when I was a disabled person. So my question is, whether you will see or you expect the policies that will be implemented by the state. Yes, these are good initiatives, what we see on the horizon that we will be successful in implementing, but without NGOs the way I see it, without the interaction between the state and the NGOs that care for the persons with disability, this Cooperation is doomed. What kind of cooperation, interaction between NGOs and state do you expect? Will such a interaction be put in place? I think it is very important that the interaction between the government and AGO is very important. This is, in fact, a basis for a normal democratic relations in any democratic state. These. Uh, points have been reflected in the bill double five four o d and the next panel will be concentrating on that in particular but this draft law stipulates a new format of the interaction between ngos and the government including the disabled persons projects you see we like the to segregate everywhere in the current legislation there is something that i cannot understand when they say that there are organizations that employs people with the disabilities if i am not a disabled person and i would like to promote the social de protection mechanisms am i in eligible for 
participation. If I am a mother of a person with disability, or my father was a person with disability, am I eligible to participate in such an organization? How do you regulate these things? The legislation is silent, but we have some stereotypes. So I endorse the wording that we have heard today when in Europe they say that there are organizations representing the interests of the persons with disabilities. It's not a, ma a matter of statute of an organization. It should be very clear what such an organization is targeting, who is the founder, who are the members. This is all democracy. Everyone is entitled to get engaged in something that your heart is uh, willing to participate in. We have environmentalists, we have people promoting rights of animals, so we should push the envelope, go beyond the box. And I challenge you not to be afraid of pushing the envelope. We should be open in discussing our issues, including NGOs, different organizations, whether you have the status of pan-Ukrainian organization, it's not relevant today because this will not comply with the current legislation. My point is that the organization such as yours with a successful agenda, 90% of the persons representing and working for our organization are persons with this a with disabilities. But let us not discriminate against the rest 10%. Let us talk about the broader picture of representation. I personally believe that people should be engaged in providing different services. The organizations for the disabled persons in terms of their support and lobbying their interests, this will be paid for by the government in terms of the provided services. So our interaction will be well defined. That is to say, these are our requirements, one, two, three, and four, and these will be meeting the needs of the particular organization serving the interests of the persons with disabilities. Another thing to mention, we talked to the Euro Commissioners, Mr. Schmidt and the Lee, people responsible for the employment and inclusive issues. We told them that we realize this country is in state of war, and it's on, not until the January of next year that we will be talking about particular issues. But we would like to stipulate now how the state purchases will be conducted. That is to say, we are ready to launch a joint inclusive project. They, in Europe, said that they will be ready to share with us their best practices. They will be supporting us financially to set up a new philosophy of interaction with the persons with disability. This work is going to be uh, getting to a new stage, and the European Commission will someday tell us that the model that we are now testing in Ukraine comply with the European practices, and indeed we will show the best practices of how government and NGOs can interact. Thank you. My next issue is where does the money come from as a state to support such organizations? You see, we need to, shall I sell abandon, that's the wrong word, reform some organizations. Any change implies that the money is available. Who is ready to answer? You see, next to me is a person who is responsible for collecting the money. But we are receiving some resources from Europe. Our European counterparts understand that Ukraine needs to get engaged on board, on the labor market people, including people with a disability. This is part of the social responsibility practices. So the first contribution, I think, will be coming from Europe, but we'll be also engaging the internal mechanisms in this country to provide for the new kinds of social services and support. As a result, I am sure we will not need anything to be abandoned or killed. We will promote all the working models 
those medals that will prove to be efficient and the best. But what matters here is that people have to enjoy some choice. Until there is a choice, there is nothing to choose from. But what we want to do is to suggest the, and offer the best. You see, I will not be enjoying the language of abandoning or killing or disbanding some organizations. There are bodies and organizations that are there in the market. No one prevents them from functioning. But we are talking about the resources here. To, in order to enjoy resources, to have them available. Indeed, we are facing the challenge of providing resources and finances. Last year, we saw that the social economic situation in Ukraine, the administrative sanctions, were at the level of more than not at the level of 70 percent of what had been planned before so we were underfinanced of course let alone some ways and avenues of development we are changing the system of uh, administrative and economic sanctions now we've been more proactive including the pension fund and the fund for the protection of the persons of with disabilities we are seeing some results now we are moving forward to fulfilling the plan for this year but if i were to tell you what these official figures were it will make you cry it was only 116 million grievances, which will provide only for some way of minimal support for the organizations working for the rehabilitation of the persons with disabilities. When we talk about building up a new system, we are talking billions here, and this is quite a new dimension. Let me draw your attention to the need of the period of establishing and the period of a systematic growth. At the period and stage of reorganization and establishing, yes, we talk about the way of getting money from European Commission, from European countries, but in the far the future, we should be thinking about the systematic approach and the legislation will meet those needs. We must be aware of those legislative nov nov novels that is the focal point of today's discussion. Without the resolving of such a system, of course, we can do something now. We can start talking. We can talk about how to incentivize the employer, but then as a, a, a philosophical need of getting the system work. Thank you. We will be hopeful that Ukraine will be successful in building up a system per se. You know, the the proverb goes, we wanted the best, but there, there was a lack of money. The NGO and the businesses will get united. But you see, a couple of days ago, I, I read an article on the Facebook about a European business in Ukraine. I will not name the particular business. But it talked about the discrimination of a person with a disability when a girl participated in an interview and she, when she applied with the whole set of documents, she was rejected and they turned her down because she is a person with a disability. She is, is eligible for some additional payment. You see, what will be the response of the society? How are we going to work with this? The state is able to word nice legislation. Imagine that there will be some money going from the people ready to subsidize. But we as persons, what are we going to do? This is a complex issue and a story. We should be following along the couple of avenues. Yeah, the culture of exception and perception, and it's a pity that many com international companies who have successful experience of implementation of this legislation abroad in Ukraine, they walk a road of discrimination. And the second thing is we need to get engaged the human rights organizations and public sector when people underwent the interview, I'm talking as a lawyer here, they already got accepted preliminary, they were only refused only when their disability was found out 
and uh, through the engagement of inspection bodies, control bodies, we have to punish for such discrimination because regardless of the stimuli that we want and we aspire to develop, we don't have to turn the employers into criminals. The adhesive system shows that a priori all the employers are criminals and they have to pay penalties, we have to offer options. And at the same time, we have to punish them severely for such intentional activities that are a very bad expression of discrimination and discrimination in Ukraine should not be tolerated. Uh, there's yet another comment. I would like to add a couple of words that here one thing is the legal punishment and another thing is a positive example. When companies present in Ukrainian market, whether Ukrainian or international, they have to serve as the example within their corporate and social responsibility framework. They have to communicate, my apologize, well, translate it to the market that this is the right approach and this is how you want to act as a responsible employer. And the general practice is that in such cases the market will punish the violators itself. The customers would not choose that company, the partners would not want to cooperate with them. So it's about reputational risk which would grow for such companies. So I hope that positive examples will become will be becoming more and more. Thank you very much. I would like to give our journalists right to ask questions. Uh, good morning, Yulia Avakumovna. Ukar informed just a week ago the Employment Service presented quite a powerful research. They questioned more than 8,000 employers, and employers identified as the risk of employment in the post war period the le lack of interest from the vulnerable categories of population, including people with disabilities. Mr. Vitali emphasized this aspect today that there is no proactive approach by the from the bottom, so to say. Well, not in all of the people, but there is such phenomena in place. So about stimuli, what to do with people who don't aspire to find any job if they have already some subsidies? Well, probably it's not about a cookie, but a whip. Well, is the reformative of the model? Look, we also had a question of people with disabilities and talking about the level of their readiness to work is way higher than the employers think. So when we talk about a question of, empl of employers and asking them for explanation why they don't employ people with disabilities, it's one of the stereotypes that people with disabilities don't want to work. Obviously, it's not so. There is lack of instruments for interaction. Yes, there is a bias. I won't be accepted. I have a bad infrastructure. I cannot get to my job. I have a small support disbursement, so I better don't ponder about it and go through all those circles of hell to be humiliated for my disability. But again, let's look. Today, the portrait of people with disabilities is changing. The, that's a young man or young woman who were proactive. They took up the arms to defend their country and they are not ready to get locked up in their apartment and to live with their disability. They want to get back to the front lines, actually. So we have to understand that we cannot say that people with disabilities are those who don't want to work. They want to work. And it's important for us to build those bridges between employers, employers and those people. It's important to find the ways of approach. And an uh, important aspect is the speed. This is why we change the phases of rehabilitation. When people are being picked up in the hospital, they are being rehabilitated sooner than six months after rehabilitation, when the, there are additional instruments for rehabilitation, people don't lose that time because each of us, it's natural. It's natural when we stay isolated for a long time, we have additional fears. I will tell you about my experience, maybe not so relevant. I had a maternity leave for two years after expiration of second year. I Meanwhile, I was 
I was active, I was communicating, but I had this barrier built which created fears. So what's most important is to eliminate this phase of isolation and this is how these new people will not appear who will have fear of employment. The service of social accompaniment is also important. We have to work with the social workers who would help the people to overcome that barrier. Thank you. Irina Kozhukhar, I'm having a question to Ms. Oksana. If you can give us better detail about the statistics, if it's available today, how many people with disabilities in Ukraine are registered today and since the beginning of the full-scale invasion how many people left if you have such data available you said that before the war 2.7 people with disabilities were employed no it was only 700,000 employed out of 2.7 billion millions I'm sorry so for what I understand there are no updated figures so in what sectors were those people employed, if I may? Well, regarding the people with disabilities, today the number has not changed radically. So we're in at about 2.6, 2.9 million people with disabilities because the majority of the military who receive some injury, they don't get registered as disabled. What's interesting, by the way, when we provide rehabilitation for the people we today we give them everything without their status of disability for example they lose a limp or something else they don't move forward with that process you rehabilitated them and they want to get employed further on and they don't need that status they don't need pension so in the total number of the registered people with disability it has not changed a lot. So this is the first thing that if we move the accent, if we provide people with employment, we don't have to add any additional disbursements. As to the resource, I urge all the employers to take it seriously, to consider the disabled people as a part of their job resource, because 8 million people left abroad, and we understand that not all of them will be coming back, and today the lack of human resource is felt by every company including the international ones so we have to reconsider those employees who will fill a labor market who are ready to get engaged in any job we have to include all the people all people in all spheres as to the areas where people with disabilities work that's a wide broad range of areas so we cannot say that people with disabilities only get employed here so because the problem is that only people with the third group of disability get employed which is invisible like an absence of a shield gland or the insulin dependency but people with heavy disabilities who use the wheelchair or they lose the sight completely unfortunately for them we have barriers because in our support in our quote we don't differentiate whom we support only people with the third group of disability or the first and second groups as well so the amendments to legislation are urged to segregate those groups because we understand that people with heavier disability we have to compensate the employer more this percentage for loss of productivity in a bodner one plus one tsn the question to miss minister you're talking about amendments to the legislation they are already written so are they already adopted when will it start working yes it's a draft law 5344d which is being discussed for a long time all those innovations that we're discussing today they they're reflected there is the withdrawal from punishment the stimulating contribution the coverage of all the businesses with that quota because even today our representative from European Disabilities Forum, he said that the public sector takes the advantage of employment of people with disabilities and in our case is the other way around. The penalties are only paid by the private businesses. Those requirements are not applied to the public sector and in this law it covers all the businesses. The we say that the government should 
undertake the major part of the support for people with disabilities like social services the expansion of a number of uh, social businesses all those innovations are reflected in this draft and it's important for us that population pays attention to it and they communicate to the people's deputies that this draft should be prioritized and supported because there are many biases and fears from the existing businesses from existing companies that are afraid of changes they're just afraid of changes but we want to communicate that changes are sometimes for the better no matter they're not so easy to understand but there is nothing in this draft that could restrict or narrow the circle of people with disabilities we retain the existing models for the two years and we implement the new ones to show that they will be more efficient we are preparing it for the first reading i hope that shortly it will be in the hall and i hope that the deputies will support it in the first reading thank you miss Oksana. thank you dear journalists for the questions you will have an opportunity to ask more questions during second panel because we will have more speakers who will be capable of answering all of your questions for the time being i want to thank our speakers both male and female and we hope that this draft law will be supported with the amendments uh, proposed by the NGOs so it's perfect thank you very much and I want to invite the participants of the second panel here thanks
Я Welcome everybody. We continue our discussion. In a nutshell, I will remind you that we are talking about the employment of the people with disability. This is not coincidence, because today on the 1st of May is the Labor Day, and the right to labor, to work, is very important. It's not to say that there are priorities here, but for the grown-ups with the disabilities, this is very important in terms of self-realization, full life. We talk that tell here in Ukraine that freedom is our religion. This is very important indeed, and we would like to draw the attention of the whole society to these issues. It's a good talking point for today. And I'm saying, talking about the legislative bill that is in the parliament, journalists have done their share. They have drawn the attention of the society to this issue. But in the first place, I would like to address the speakers and panelists of today. But before that, I will introduce ourselves. I am I am a expert at the Euroscope, which is part of the project called ANTS. To contextualize, I would like to inform you that we are a set of NGOs, and we do hope for the Ukrainian-European integration. European integration is a chance for Ukraine, once we have a support from the European partners, to change the Ukrainian society, including the amendments and new legislation. I would like to give the floor to Oksana Totachana Berizhna, who is the Deputy Minister of Social Policy in Ukraine. As you see, we've uh, got a uh, broad representation here. We've uh, heard today during the first panel discussion that there are a lot of interests and sphere that have been in the, in the intersection. The employment of the persons with disabilities is a complex issue. Of course, we would like to hear from the Ministry of Economy what the plans are and what are they doing in terms of getting people with disability employed. Welcome, everybody, and thank you, Marianna. Yes, the Ministry of Economy formed the agenda. When we think about the persons with disabilities, we understand that the time is not available at the time of the full-scale invasion, there have been a couple of projects to integrate these people into labor market. I've got a presentation available. There have been a number of data that you have heard so far. There are a lot of and different categories of people who are in need of our, shall I say, support, but I would rather say our attention that will enable them to live a full life. Now, of course, people with disabilities part and parcel of that project. At this point in time, it's difficult to set a specific figure. We have seen a rise in the ra range of people with disabilities because of the war. When we mention the number of people who have been registered officially, the number is not that high. What you see here is in the ballpark of 800,000 people that were registered last year. 5.7% of those are persons with disabilities, which is to say that this is 
very small number of people. We should look broader. We should look into the possibilities and steps and policies to get those people on board, people that have been not officially registered as disabled persons. So our work at the ministry is targeted towards three areas. One is to encourage employer to provide employment for the persons with disabilities. Secondly, we know that there are people who have the talent for businesses and they need some government support to get on track. And third group is people who have to acquire a new set of skills, people who have not yet made up their minds whether they want to be employers, but they know that they need some new set of skills. This is what we are actually doing. We are working in three areas, and I will focus on one specific area in order. When we work on some political decisions, we are in constant consultations with the employers. We have had two uh, public opinion polls with the employers. We are talking about 999 businesses. We asked them whether they were able and willing to engage people with disabilities. As you see, 45 said in the positive, 21 said that they didn't know, 33 answered in the negative. This is my answer, whether the employer needs the government support. 38 of those polled answered in the positive. We discussed a lot of issue with employers and we said what the government is ready to do to provide jobs for the disabled persons. The number of those willing to employ that category of people grows significantly. My point is that once we start to explain to businesses the importance of uh, such persons to be engaged in the labor market, we make people think about the things they didn't think about. What you see in the yellow here on the screen, the yellow turns green, that is to say more people are willing and ready to provide jobs. The first category of questions is how to incentivize employer to employ such persons, a program that we are not completely happy about because we are talking about 50% of compensation and this should not be north of uh, 6,700 grievances for half a year. This mechanism is not used generally because we are talking about unemployed only. And the number of such people among the disabled persons is not that high. The Ministry of Economy is now in the process and we have moved quite significantly along the way. We have prepared a bill and it is now being reviewed by the central authorities. Now, that decree provides for the following. Due to the cooperation with the KPMG and other differences, the businesses, we analyzed and saw a broader picture of the European countries how to incentivize companies and businesses to employ the disabled. And we understood that what we haven't taken advantage of is the mechanisms for providing new job places for the persons with disabilities of the first and second groups. It requires a lot of money to get those people adapted and to be favorable for these people. We're talking about 15 minimal wages for the first group, which is more than one hundred thousand and ten wages for the second group. What I'm saying is that the employer can purchase some equipment to adapt such work places. For example, some equipment that will raise the wheelchair up to the level of the uh, table and desk, then we should provide the uh, reading uh, tables for the blind people. How does that work? The employer adapts working the jobs place and they will provide the documents and once they document comply with our 
needs, they will be compensated for such an adaptability mechanisms. I will define this as a possibility for a disabled person to lead a full life in their jobs. This is not to compensate the employer. This is a chance for the persons with disabilities to live a full life at their job. The second mechanism that we have provided for, and I hope this will be positively reviewed by the government, is the salary compensation. When we talk to the employers, we realize that this is something they need. We are talking about 15,000 grievances for the first half a year. This will cover the single social contribution, which will not be higher than a set uh, figure. This is a compensation mechanism. I would like to have two more minutes. You see, the number of panelists has increased, so I would like to give the floor to other people as well. As for the employment of the disabled persons, I would also say about mention the grant program for these people to start their business. It goes up to one million grivnia. The people are el eligible for that, those who have uh, suffered the loss of limb during the war. And another category is the person that has been registered as a private entrepreneur over the last two years. The money is available because this is being paid for through the unemployment fund. And as far as these grants are concerned. We've got enough money for the current year. This program will be up and running. There is another example that we take pride of. Ms. Tatyana from Srepetivka has set up a uh, coffee house that will be serving the needs of the children with the Down syndrome. And we think this is a success story because these people are not socialized. And I, we believe that this story will be a success story for whole Ukraine to see as an example. What you see on the screen now are the figures. The previous panel asked a legitimate question, where does the money come from? And we answer that this will not only be coming from the pension fund, not only from our foreign partners, there are special policies that we are going to get implemented because economic independence and dignity is the key of our programs. Thank you very much, Mr. Tanner. And getting back to what was said today, I would like to remind you the definition of who is a person with disability. We were talking about rights of people with disabilities are the people with a sustainable sensory physical violation who in interaction with different barriers does not receive an equal access to life in the society so it's not a question of the international experience what are the violations of the, or disruptions of the qualities but it's about barriers and one of such barriers is legislation so let's continue talking about our 5344 draft and i would like to pass the microphone to miss galina because the ball is at your part of the field as it is said the draft is already registered so what are the barriers lifted except for the legislative ones. Thanks, Ms. Mariana. Thanks for having this event on the 1st of May because the economic independence for every Ukrainian, not regardless whether they are full functional or partially incapacitated, it's, the, uh, it's an important value. We fight for democracy, liberty, freedom. So about the draft law, about 53.44, I will stop at that, but generally within the last three years we were working not only on that draw but we switched to the international classifier of functionality which has been implemented by minister of social policy and ministry of health and they are the fundamental to have this 5344 to exist as a draft law and something that we talk about now as a good deed that we can do 
which can be financed by the mechanisms that are implemented by that draft 5344 draft. Mr. Zolnovich mentioned a lot about this. Mr. Muzichenko from Fund of People with Disabilities. I will stop at the most important thing. So that draft is about good deeds. It does not discriminate anybody. It in no way takes anything from anybody. It only provides all the people who lost some their some of their functionality it gives everybody the opportunity to get themselves realized it does not restrict any freedom of any people this draft only allows people to get themselves realized in the way they want to the majority of ukrainians were confident everybody who takes part in this discussion are confident that economic independence is the most important thing if anybody thinks themselves not capable enough to step back to make this step back to return to to labor to employment the, the people are called incapacitated i don't like when it's used in legislation when it's uh, used to describe the some minimum wage i think that we are all capable and our task is to recover ukraine after the war and everybody can be engaged in this process as capable person so 5344 first of all for people's deputies it it talks about the standard of a four percent quote for the public and private sector which it means that public sector will comply with that quote and if they don't in that case it should be punished and penalized in such penalties it will entail financial consequences which will be channeled to the people to the fund for people with disabilities for reconstruction of opportunities for people with disabilities so-called so smart workplaces which are tuned adjusted to different types of disabilities uh, it, it, the disability is a variable phenomena and our local governments and central governments and ministry of social policy all have to work with that they got engaged in development of these drafts in a very active manner so those jobs they have to be created but they cannot be created before this law is adopted another thing is a different approach to four percent quote not a punishing approach but a stimulating approach when the businesses don't want to create jobs or they don't have an opportunity to create jobs but what we've seen from the presentation of mr tiana that a large number of employers they are ready and they want to do that is the third time that i reiterate it is the draft about good deeds the employers want to realize themselves for corporate responsibility for ukraine with their good deeds and even with, without making it demonstrating it as a corporate responsibility doing those good deeds so the transition from punishing to stimulating approach is a fundamental to this draft law and the the ways to allocate that money they are restricted you know that now the government provides all those funds at cost of the central budget the funds of the ministry of social policy are spent for this but those funds are not targeted for creating new jobs and it creates new additional barriers in the labor space to create barriers free environment as miss first lady said it all starts with the first words with the people with disabilities as we call them but we have to build three big environments labor environment that we talk about public environment where people with disabilities may move around with no barriers and people around have to understand that we're all different and such support from one another is which is very inherent in ukrainians it should it should be transferred to those people with disabilities too and apart from the targeted use of fund for people with disabilities this draft implements the convention of the united nations on people with disabilities and also builds the rules for communication between the government and the organizations who represent the people with disabilities which is important too it this draft went along a difficult way it was passed through our committees twice and both times the committee took a positive decision for 
for the parliament and it recommended to the parliament to get the law adopted but during one of the hearings it was forwarded to the repeated hearing and people's deputies maybe under the pressure of those who were afraid that that draft would infringe someone's interests or rights so it's forwarded to the repeated first hearing again i want to emphasize that there will be no harm from this draft law just like every reform there are certain fears that it may narrow the rights i think i think that after me a person will take the mic who were who was evaluating the compliance of this law with the global and european united nations documents we all have positive summaries it's in full compliance with the conventions conventions of the united nations directives of the european union it's absolutely european the model which is latest fundamental is very similar to polish model meanwhile i am adherent of the uh, creation mechanism for ukraine which are more inherent in here and which could be implemented using that potential that that is available for our central executive bodies because implementation of the draft is yet another important step because people with disabilities just like every other every Ukrainian, they may face the system of front offices of the government which are not yet reconstructed in a European way. I would like to urge all the non-government organizations, I'm happy to see all of them here, they influence the wording of this draft law and I urge everybody to support, to send the people's deputies who don't, who have not fully read through the advantages of the draft law to send them the words of support through Facebook or otherwise that we are ready to continue working on this draft and adopt it at least during the first reading and start working on the second reading. The work on the second reading is very important too because everybody can submit their amendments and I undertake an obligation on behalf of the NGOs that are present here that the amendments that will be submitted will be added to the table and will be considered during our, during the meetings of our working groups where the deputy ministers and the minister of social policy are always present our groups are always active we used public consultation for the first time in the work of the parliament the, com the committee likes to communicate with the public and dealing with the problems of the public is also a work of our committee so open the way for our deputies to consider this draft law so it's implemented I would like it to be implemented this year thank you very much Ms. Helena well the the question that we brought up a number of times it's uh, it, this draft is of euro integration nature and whether it complies well yeah it complies with the european charter but there is a small nuance related to the directive i wrote down the number 391 it's about terminology the social protection of people with disabilities so the matter of euro integration nature of this draft i would like it to be commented by mr sergey nishinsky he's the ad senior legal advisor to the deputy minister of social policy for european and euro atlantic integration thank you thank you well today i represent two organizations because i'm an advisor to the office of the vice premier which is delegated by the public sector and also I represent Help Heroes of Ukraine, the diaspora, Ukrainian diaspora organization in Chicago who supported the people with disabilities in Ukraine in amount almost of 13 million dollars. Well, regarding the compliance with the European practices, Ms. Kalina, as the head of the committee, referenced it re relevantly to the cabinet of minister and office of the vice premier was able to get engaged in discussion together with the directorate for euro integration and 46 pages 46 pages 
of the document they listed what does comply what does not comply but generally it complies with the European practice there are technical sometimes even grammatical remarks but it's a normal working process that just requires improvement and what I can say is that when commissioners European commissioners come to Ukraine the first thing they pay attention to is the priorities of the government and the office of the president which were set transparency maximum openness to the public and understanding what the draft law or what what is the main message so when the european commissioners come and when they see certain discrepancies or in compliance of some businesses who on one hand they work in compliance with European standards I mean with persons with disabilities and on the other hand there is a conflict of interest when there is the f private company on the first floor and the same em employees work there so there is a question if the funds from European reserve funds are being allocated for operation of these public enterprises so how come there is the private sector involved it, sh it should be advocated it should be explained to the European commissioners the absence of the jobs absence of certain resources and we were not talking about the people here you just cited the definition of the convention the definition of the people with disabilities and the first word there is the persons it doesn't say persons with disability it doesn't say citizens of ukraine with disabilities so it's about the scale of this and scaling the resolution of the cabinet of ministers 231 which allowed ukrainians the Ukrainians with disabilities to live abroad and what is the problem in European Union now who with all due respect is not always the ex example in terms of provision of medical support or employment we have situation when people with first second or third category of disability cannot not only get employed but they are not recognized as the disabled persons so what's important for us to do is the recognition r recognition of our documents in European Union in certain countries where our citizens as it was mentioned more than 8 million I cannot say which part of them are people with disabilities I don't have that information however the recognition of those documents by the European Union will help us to occupy that niche which was not contemplated by us either in a draft or during our discussion because not all of us are entrepreneurs not all of us are businesses but businessmen but we have rights to be protected in both our country and in the countries of European Union whom we picked up as the guarantors of our security and there are many thoughts with the European commissioners for example support of people with disability the citizens of Ukraine in the territories of European Union by providing them with jobs with quoting because now the Euro uh, the European Union imposes the quotes for the, for those such people to be Ukrainians people with disabilities and I was meeting a number of people in Slovakia Hungary and detail Italy with the representatives for example of uh, LGBT or representatives of people with disabilities representatives who emigrated from Ukraine who remain there retain their Ukrainian citizenship but they are there for about 10 years but they continue to be private entrepreneurs they continue to pay taxes in Ukraine so if they continue this category of population they continue helping Ukraine by paying taxes by the nations by their presence over there and promotion of Ukraine it's yet another uh, component of support of Ukraine and those people require attention to what we are talking about are refugees we have stateless persons with documents we are not talking about foreigners who have this certificate and are entitled to living here and enjoying the same rights as the ukrainian citizens apart from 
occupying political offices or serving in the Ukrainian armed forces. This is a kind of category of citizenry that must be paid special attention to. We should not leave them behind. But going back to the draft law, this legislation 5344D, in my view, is the best example of a draft law. God bless me and the legislation. It is in Euro integrational in its sense. It does not narrow rights and duties, but they don't specify a list of duties. It is very important what the state can implement vis-a-vis -vis them. This is as far as my comments to this legislation goes. May God bless you. Thank you, Sergei. Here, I cannot refrain from taking the floor. As for the fact that there are a lot of people, Ukrainian citizens, that have left Ukraine. Indeed, they have not been recognized as persons with disabilities. But this is the challenge that we face, because in the UN, we don't have the definition that says that a disabled person means a person that has a license or a paper from Ukraine. When we talk about particular numbers, we know the difference. And it's not because people are different. The international classification is something that we should take on board so that we become more internationalized. And this will be the subject of today's talk. 5344D, of course, is very important, but we should move beyond words. I would like to give the floor now to the representative of the Council of Europe. Council of Europe is one of the co-organizers. We have heard Ms. Kipsikanyan that took the floor early in the morning, but Alena Rim that is going to take the floor. She was engaged in getting this draft law prepared. We are aware that a lot of norms in the European Social Charter have been worked on and implemented into this draft law. I would like Elena to talk on that in more detail. Welcome. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We can both see and hear you. Once again, Welcome to all the panelists and participants of the roundtable discussion. This is an extremely pressing issue that has brought us together here. There is a lot of information that we have heard to the effect that the problem is not a new one. When the draft law 5344D was being developed, we faced the challenge of uh, looking up to and living up to the challenge that have been neglected for some time. And there are a lot of things that we should have taken on board, meaning to work out the new algorithms, in particular because Ukraine is waging the war, a number of persons with disabilities is growing. While working on this draft law, the team in the first place was working out what are the most pressing issues in terms of uh, employment of the persons with disabilities. We have heard more than once a fact that panelists had suggested to the fact that the current legislation does not allow for the efficient implementation of the government policy in this context. In particular, the accessibility of the persons with disabilities to the open labor market. This is where we need to work out an efficient working mechanisms. We are not talking about the duties of the employers. They have proven to be not very much efficient because the implementation of the so-called reasonable application raises a lot of questions. The issue of quota, which is inherent in our system for providing employment for such persons, it's an example of inefficiency of the system, although this system has been spread throughout Europe. 
the system of quota has not been supported by other mechanisms. It has been written in a way that provides way to diverge from those who those employers who are not willing to employ persons with disabilities. The, mem the philosophy of um, penalties it cannot prove to be efficient by definition. Another negative sign that is inherent for today's system is this. The employment policy of the persons with disabilities it actually escapes the government system of employment, where persons with uh, disabilities are employed or are thought to be employed by the private sector in the first place. We have also seen the lack of differentiated policy towards different kinds of persons with disabilities. That was the point that a lot of panelists have made so far. This issue must be resolved because the needs of people of different types of disabilities are different. Correspondingly, their needs must be met in terms of employment. We have also heard a lot of reasonable points to the effect that there is not a single way to resolve the issue of providing jobs. It's not there. At the same time, international community has been very active in working out some rules, examples to be followed, and they may be efficient steps in resolving these issues. Our strategic partners, European Union and the Council of Europe, have provided a number of acts that oblige the countries to follow them. And a member of the Council of Europe will eventually be a member of the European Union. So Ukraine must comply with the European mechanisms in terms of providing jobs for the persons with disabilities. A point to remember is that this legislation 5344D takes a very special point of interest in that issue. We are also referring to the Article 15 of the European Social Charter, second part of which has been, as a document in general, has been approved by Ukraine. It tells that such people must be granted access to the job places and also it relates to the job conditions. The Council of Europe looks very closely how the different countries implement these duties. The social charter is very important here. The expertise here is that as far as state is concerned is to legislate the ban on discrimination uh, according to the disability or some forms of such disabilities. The law must provide for the fact of uh, a situation when the ban on discrimination is there. But what we see in the document is the approach whether we should be talking about the promotion of equality, which is another way of looking at the ban on discrimination. So Ukraine has taken such a commitment and has lived up to it. Another document that we must look at in terms of positive job provision for the disabled persons is an equal regulation and the undertaking to provide jobs in both sectors, public and private. This is where Ukraine, again, has lived up to it, such a commitment. It is there in the law. The Social Charter also underlines the point that such rights must be included into the national legislation to the effect that persons with disabilities cannot be sacked and the employer is obliged 
to continue and prolong a job contract if such a disability has been caused by an emergency situation or by the state of health. Such mechanisms have been provided for, and there are clear-cut conditions on how and when, in which way, the employer must prolong the job contract once the disability has happened and has been caused at a particular enterprise. Apart from that, there is a point to remember that the guarantees must be secured in terms of the reasonable adaptation. It must be legitimized. The draft law 5344D does provide for such mechanisms, mechanisms for securing job conditions and employment through the prism of a reasonable adaptation. And it also promotes a number of mechanisms here. And the range is very wide from the adaptation of the building where the person will be working up to the range of uh, narrowing responsibilities, remit, or working hours of such persons. It is extremely important that such things have been included into the draft law. And another point is that there is a uh, duty of a employer to compensate, to be compensated for such creation of uh, conditions of work. This, this is something that we miss in the current legislation. Apart from that, what we see here is an interesting point. We see that the level is lower vis-a-vis -vis the European norms as far as the number of people that have, will be employed. The current legislation provides eight such persons in the European Union. The norm is from 15 to 55 persons per enterprise. You see, we are kind of limited in time. I am drawing the line here. But my emphasis is this, that the draft, draft law provides for the enlargement of a number of disabled persons. And this has been voiced today by the NGOs. What we need here is that people must be given an opportunity to acquire new set of skills. Such people must be also granted some special mechanisms in that realm. It's very important that we are discussing today not the 5344 legislation bill in itself, but the representative of the Ministry of Economy has suggested that they are working on the bylaws, a new charter that will be promoting the resolution of the issues that have been touched upon. We are talking about the synergy of the government, the representation of the NGOs, so that the NGOs interests and suggestions should be taken on board to improve the situation in terms of the employment of the persons with disabilities. I believe and hope that very shortly a relative level of providing employment for the persons with disabilities will change, but I also believe that the quality of such jobs will be implemented as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. But we are running out of time, and we have two speakers ahead. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Vitaly Pcholkin, who is the CEO of the Active Rehabilitation Group NGO. And the last month, maybe, or the last years that I know Vitaly and Ulana, they are either in the camp in fire uh, I won't give you more detailed quote, but when we talk about employment, it's important to understand that this employment, specifically when the people got disabled in adult age, and we talked a lot today that there were veterans, there will be a lot of such people among them who would not wish to 
close themselves in their homes just like we allowed or we admitted it in our society but there is certain preparation certain rehabilitation is needed so mr vitaly how is it going on in ukraine this rehabilitation who does that and on a government level does this important draft law on employment of disabled persons does it require additional amendment because we use this word in a broad sense the area itself is it ready to rehabilitate the people thank you Mr. Lana, thank you for invitation and giving this opportunity to express myself. I would put it in a broader context rather than the draft 5344D. Ms. Galina mentioned already that if we build the system that would be founded on the international classification of functioning that would study on different sides, sides what what restrictions to life activities the people may have and what should be done to bring them back to maximum independent life and full-fledged life in the social this is when we would be able to implement those ideas which are proposed because for the time being the trend is that yes we're just back from a camp of active rehabilitation in Poland where, where we trained 19 new instructors who would work with both civilian and military and our vision is that we have to scale such activity of our organization because we're talking about adequacy and profitability and it's important to do it for the military because on one hand we're happy that there is a lot of attention being paid to the matter of rehabilitation of Ukraine and on the other hand we are scared that now rehabilitation centers are being opened in maybe every other village and the number of specialists who can provide normal rehabilitation is very slow that I mean they are training and you see that there is a huge demand maybe even the students of the second year are being searched for give us some physiotherapists of any level and obviously the level and quality of rehabilitation intervention what we analyze now what we've seen and what is going on what is going further on the people who get disabled who whose health is impaired in any way that entails some consequences we see that such people they they the, those people they go through some circles of rehabilitation health they go from one establishment to another from rec recreation to a sport event from recreation event to a labor retraining and it becomes a lifestyle and what's worth is when people stop thinking stop understanding that life is different and this rehabilitation should stop at certain phase obviously the goal of rehabilitation is maybe a long-term rehabilitation but it's about more like a support of the health prevention of complications because the disability doesn't go anywhere and there is still a lot of question to assistive devices technical devices it's more correct to say so today because the assistive device may even uh, complicate the health condition with relevant consequences so i think that we have to pay more attention to rehabilitation to prof provable rehabilitation we have to speak directly that the military who is being injured that they, when their spine is injured they are not going to recover it's a fact and no no specialist in the world can cure the injury of the spine and so people have to learn to live independently move around independently use the wheelchair they have to obtain support from the government in the equipment of their living conditions re-equipment of their vehicles and retraining in driving the vehicle and those are the 
consequences of this the people get the right to live get the right to continue moving and most likely they would like to get employed further on not to remain sick for the rest of their lives this is what we're working on and we continue stimulating it and we try to say to the state that the state should build the right approaches because in one case the process of rehabilitation takes one year and only the technical support is remaining to provide some devices which allow people to feel themselves more comfortable maybe to provide a wheelchair for a certain period of time but in other case a person may require more substantial support we have to understand it and we have to equalize that balance because sometimes one has everything and the other ones they stay at home without having anything else so how to do it we have to take a joint effort to think about it but is the way which is the right way and obviously we have to take all reasonable efforts to go that way to overcome it and i see that there is the resistance of the old system which wants to retain control over some financial flows maybe some uh, measures efficiency which was never proven and if we talk about implementation of measurable activities we have to require it from both government and public organizations that provide some services so they can prove that their services are efficient because we know that there is a lot of things a lot of measures that are disputable for example me and Dulana when we end up somewhere at some specialized events or we feel ourselves uncomfortable those are the events for the disabled people not for regular people it's bad we have to provide them with support to train them the teaching that it's not right how it's done well people with disabilities should require it i think i'm going to wrap up because i'm not tracking my time so we support we assist in improvement of rehabilitation education services and all those which are contemplated by this draft law thank you very much mr vitali everything is all right mr sergey wanted to add something thank you i would like to add just a couple of words to what my colleague just said we have many non-systematic activities by the diplomatic institutions one of my functions in the office of vice premier is this is systematizing of donor support for the practical support of ukraine so when we talk about the lack of the specialists in ukraine the time for their training just like my colleague said that the students are being taken even without specialty but they can help with rehabilitation so the thousands of people in diplomatic institutions they come to us they say we are ready to we are ready to come to ukraine we are ready to withdraw from our missions in africa or elsewhere but we don't have the mechanism to systemize the foreign experts in ukraine so talking about the integration it's not to re-employ the rehabilitologist who lost his job and to just to employ him and to let him get his salary so we will engage three components first involvement of a foreign specialist on a volunteer basis we then we systematize their activities creating the register this is why we initiate together with the ministry of foreign affairs and i think my colleagues will support this idea to create the register of international volunteers specialists on rehabilitation who are ready to come to any part of the country at any moment and to help with rehabilitation to to share their experience so and moreover it's a communication in foreign language it's communication through the interpreters are their colleagues and it's a wonderful example of cooperation in integration and implementation of european experiences and practices because 
delegating 10 persons abroad to Israel, to Germany, some funds, they have such opportunity, but it's expensive. It's more efficient to bring one rehabilitologist here. So creation of the foreign rehabilitologist in Ukraine is a solution of, for one of the issues which was brought up by my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Sergei. I think that the mandatory involvement, the process of involvement of every specialist with us should be done in cooperation with civil sector, with the experts who work for a long time in this area. We have to remember about the difference in systems of rehabilitation that we have and let's not forget that in Ukraine there are better practices in place already. There are people, very small number of such people, unfortunately, is pro probably the biggest problem that there is a lack of personnel, social and educational services for children with special needs institutions, but those specialists should be involved too. And I think to wrap up our panel with such a summary for the draft law 53-44 and generally are the barriers which still remain in our society so the people with disabilities can get employed. I would like to pass the microphone to Daria Sedorin because she's the executive director of League of the Strong Public Union. It's a new type of union which unites the public organizations or civil organizations that propagate inclusion which propagate withdrawal from the medical model of disability that we have not discussed today, but we all know that it exists. The right-based approach they propagate and they say that the people with disabilities, they have equal rights with other persons and our task is to lift the barriers existing in the society. So please, Ms. Daria, I know that you paid a lot of attention and efforts to the analysis of this draft law. So what is necessary? We have a province from Ms. Kalina that everything will be taken into account. So again, list in front of the camera what should be taken into account, what else should be done. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Indeed, when I have heard all the panelists this afternoon, I would like to systematize and conclude this discussion with the following. We pursue the same for the same goal. If we have today 17% employed, I would like to see 70% uh, of those in five years' time, which is an average indicator for the European countries, which I believe will be an integral part of in a couple of years' time. Another point I would like to stress is this, to stimulate and incentivize the employer to engage disabled persons is not a matter of legislation per se. It's a comprehensive work that will not be solved shortly or easily. We see six steps here, legislation and changes, the changes and different inclusions of the bylaws by the government, for example, I'm thinking about the compensation money provided for the new job conditions. It was a tiny number of companies and enterprises that applied for such measures. The third point is to make sure that the employers are aware how to work with and communicate to the disabled persons. Fourth point is the local programs of action that would promote the provision of new skills, retraining of the disabled persons. Such programs have been mentioned by the Minister of Economy. They want to encourage the employers to take on board such people. They'll, this will increase their competency and competition in the market space. Uh, the last point, the sixth one, is something that I would call as an urge to cooperate closer with the international co institutions to be able to finance all this reform, all the steps that in itself is very complex. As for the legislation as it is, on the one hand, it implements bigger institutions, something that we are not seeing now labor coaches that will work with the 
children who've been disabled since their childhood to be for them to be able to live on their own to work on their own or to be able to socialize and to be able to work such coaches would be able to support such children and their parents during their school years as well as providing the knowledge for the pupils how to communicate with them the work of the social commissions and the rehabilitation process should also be systematized these are the first steps on the way and the 453-44d legislation only lays groundwork for this we should also be thinking about what the result will be of that legislation these people will be eligible to be compensated for their education they will be having assistant persons and thirdly they will be paid for their job places to be efficient my last point here is that six ngos are working on this legislation and we were thinking of what the general picture will be we have put up a uh, a document on what should be done in the future we are ready to cooperate and interact with the authorities on this legislation as well as on the others to provide for the fact that this system works in its entirety to conclude that what has been mentioned today I have not been enlisting all the suggestions but I clearly remember that when we talk about the persons with disabilities, in some, some persons of them believe that they are not able to work because of their disability. I believe that there's a lot of work to be done in this area in terms of public awareness and public media campaigns to make sure that they understand they are able to work, that the employers stand ready to work with them, that people with disabilities can start up their businesses. They will show that they are able to take advantage of the new standards. Thank you very much. We seem to have no time for more questions, but perhaps the panelists would uh, comment on what you have heard as Mr. Sergei has done, or we may invite questions from the floor. I would like to address the Deputy Minister. When you were talking about 15,000 grievances of compensation, is this the replacement for the current 6,000? And are we talking about those people that have been officially registered at the job centers? Indeed, this program will be there in parallel to the current program. 6,700 is only for those who have been officially registered. And I mentioned that people are unwilling to get registered. We know that the state service needs to learn new skills how to communicate. So the old program will be there. But the new one that I touched upon, and something that we are working on will be uh, up and running in parallel but we would like to see all the people with disabilities registered let me say a few words on the right to work indeed the european social charter does not stipulate which right is prioritized over others but it does start with the right to work then the right to social protection, health care, and education. The social, European Social Charter begins with the right to work, which provides for the opportunity for a person to, to live a full life and to be fruitful in their work for the sake of the whole society. You remember that we are social persons indeed. Indeed, we are social beings. As for a little systematization, what matters now is this. When we discuss the terminology, that we discuss the narratives 
that we hear from the European Union. Sometimes these narratives are imposed upon us, sometimes we impose on them. But this unique document that perhaps will see the light of the day in our country, believe me, this will systematize and provide a lot of questions in terms of the legislation. Thank you. I would also like to say a few words on the register. It's a good idea. And I think systematization is always useful. But the question that we have on many points in terms of the public policy and government policies is this. State entities, they also striving to fulfill what has been officially demanded. Two specialists on this position, two experts here, and they're striving to put it on paper that we have such stuff available. This is all technical points, but the quality is not attended to. It has, uh, it has officially been reported that we've complied with all the official requirements. Of course, we are talking about control here and supervision and the influence, the impact we should be aware that there are problem issues that we should respond to in a timely manner. You see accessibility. 90% of the Ukrainian ministers pointed out that for the year 2024, they will put it into life. How will that be monitored? You see, in real life, a little change will be seen. So it, this process should be supervised and it should be impacted from our part, from our part of the NGOs. Thank you. As far as I am concerned, the issue of employment of the persons with disabilities, it's not that it's limitless, but it touches upon a lot of areas. The discussion is still open. As we have heard today, there is a lot of work to be done. We are facing a lot of events, and this draft law is one, the, the first sparrow on this way, not only on the Ukraine's way to Europe, but also in terms of empowering disabled persons. We should be talking to the Ministry of Education. We should be talking about the state requirements and the order from the country, from the state as it is, as far as the number of experts, qualified experts are concerned. We were talking about stigmata, stereotypes, that the business is not willing to cooperate. There is another stereotype to the fact that disabled persons are not willing to work. Another permanent prejudice is that this is not possible to implement. It's better to provide people with some social payments. And this is where we should come to a closer understanding of what the social responsibility is instead of, you know, doling out money. We are talking about the European expertise. So there is a lot of work to be done. And I appreciate the work of today's panelists. We have touched upon an important issue, and we hope that this discussion will be fruitful in the future, engaging a lot more people and experts in this area. Sorry, I would like also to put my two cents worth. It's a shame that we don't have representatives of the Ministry of the Social Policy, but we should be aware of the problem of compensating. If such a convention is not ratified by Ukraine, we've been talking about that for many years, a decent salary for the rehabilitation aspects. Once we enlarge the list of experts in rehabilitation area. We get the university students to work in, in that capacity. It will yield no result. You see, the first priority is ratification of the international documents and instruments according to the Ukrainian constitution before this, that legislation is implemented. You see, our time is up. And perhaps we will be discussing that behind the scenes. Once again, thank you very much. Again, on this Labor Day, we have had with us the NGO ANTS, the League of the Strong, and the Council of Europe. 
that have co-sponsored today's events. I believe that the employment of the persons with the disabilities, we know that the target is more than 50 percent. How much time will it take? Well, we are not talking about the time framework. Shall we take five years? Five, in five years' time, 50 percent of the Ukrainian persons with disabilities will be provided with employment. Amen. Thank you.